Well, the 1980s certainly gave rise to a number of strange-looking cars, both inside and out. And one of those strange-looking cars came from a company that was known for building solid, reliable economy cars, and that was Subaru. We don't normally talk about foreign cars on this channel, but if you're going to discuss awesome instrument panels and certainly strange ones, you can't leave out the 1985 Subaru XT interior from that conversation. It's perhaps one of the funkiest interiors in all of automotive history, only surpassed by a few others that I can think of, again, in foreign cars. But let's discuss the Subaru XT interior a bit more and what makes it so strange compared to other vehicles of its era. First of all, let's address the question of why Subaru would even elect to enter the so-called sports car arena with the XT in the mid-80s. While one can only presume that they were tired of watching Mazda with its RX-7 and Nissan with its 300ZX, and perhaps even Toyota with its MR2 have offerings in this space, they really have nothing to compare to. Hence the XT, which they interestingly never referred to in any literature as a sports car. In fact, Subaru often referred to it as a new breed of personal luxury vehicle. Well, certainly when one looks at the interior of this car, luxury isn't the adjective that comes to mind. Strange, curious, odd. Those are really adjectives that best describe the interior of the XT, and indeed perhaps the exterior as well, which bore a distinctive wedge shape that at least endowed it with a very low 0.29 coefficient of drag, which beat a number of sports cars of the era, despite its funky looks. But let's turn to the inside of the Subaru XT because that's where most of the weirdness exists once you can get past the exterior. And the first thing that you notice when you're sitting in the cockpit is this very odd L-shaped two-spoke steering wheel. This has to be one of the strangest looking two-spoke steering wheels that I have ever seen. Kind of reminds me a bit of the Citroen one-spoker. But it's an odd shape, and it's not only odd because of the L shape on the two-spoke wheel, which, at least from my memory, is the only one that I can recall in this form, but also because on the left side of the steering wheel, where there's not a spoke, there is a thumb rest for driving at the 9 o'clock position on the steering wheel. So you don't have a spoke to rest your thumb on, but you do get this little notch in the steering wheel to make sure that you're ready to drive this personal luxury vehicle on whatever roads you so choose. Behind the steering wheel is a complement of switches. On the right, the HVAC controls. On the left, the lighting controls predominantly. And these were affixed to pods, which were affixed to the steering column. On this car, you can tilt and telescope the wheel and those pods for the controls would actually move with the steering wheel as it went up and down and in and out so that they say the same distance from your fingertips no matter what position the steering wheel was located in. It's a bit similar of an idea to what AMC and Renault would use on the Eagle Premier. Those pods off to the side of the steering wheel also moved up and down as one tilted the wheel. Next on the interior, we must talk about the joystick control gear shift, which must have been particularly inviting for those who enjoyed manual transmission vehicles to operate a joystick lever control back and forth to row through the gears. In addition to being fun, the joystick featured on the top of it a button to ensure that four-wheel drive mode was engaged. And when one engaged four-wheel drive mode in these Subarus, the vehicle also raised its height by about 1.3 inches to assist in ground clearance, and it also helped firm up the shocks. Unfortunately, if you got an automatic transmission model or you did not have the four-wheel drive option, then this joystick control was a bit less fun and less video gamey, as you can see here. But it nonetheless was still an odd feature in the interior. Next, let's turn to the gauge cluster and the electronic cluster in the Subaru XT in particular. The standard gauges were analog and really nothing to write home about. Kind of BMW style, large tachometer, large speedometer, 
with four mini gauges flanking them. But the coolest instrument cluster that was featured in the Subaru XT was the digital cluster. And in the realm of funky digital instrument clusters, this one, if it doesn't take the cake, certainly comes close. Can't say that I've ever seen another instrument cluster that has this sort of horizon-like design to it. And interestingly, on one side of this horizon is the RPM gauge, which as the engine RPMs increase, a bar graph moves closer towards you. It's very similar on the right-hand side of that horizon with the turbo gauge, which as the turbo spools up, that gauge also comes closer to you or more proximate to you. And in the middle of this instrument cluster is a picture of a car, which really is kind of nondescript, but when you push the four-wheel drive button on the gear selector, the car physically raises up on the display to denote that your vehicle is raising its ride height, and it also displays a four-wheel drive logo, so you, you know that that is engaged. Those are certainly the most atypical elements of the gauge cluster. I do like, however, that the temperature gauge on the left and the fuel gauge on the right are not two-dimensional, but are also three-dimensional and tilted toward the vanishing point on the horizon as well. And above those are some rather conventional digital readouts on the right for miles per hour, or you could switch that to kilometers per hour if needed. And on the left is an RPM gauge in digits, as opposed to trying to read the horizon line and figure out exactly what engine speed you are operating at. And while some elements are conventional of this instrument cluster and some are unconventional, the overall interior of this car, I just find it very interesting. The Subaru somehow thought that this screamed personal luxury, at least so much to advertise it. Perhaps they didn't want to say that it was a sports car because these XTs aren't overly powerful, particularly in the 1985 model year, where in turbo form, which was the top optional engine, Maybe about 111 horsepower, and the standard engine was in the low 90 horsepower range without the turbo. So they weren't overly fast. I think the turbo vehicles went 0 to 60 in about 11 seconds, the non turbo cars in about 14 seconds, which wasn't horrible for the time, but it certainly was not sports car territory. And I surmise that's why Subaru wanted to avoid that moniker in these early years when the car was introduced. Nonetheless, it has, I have to say, one of the coolest interiors of all time and certainly is one that is worthy of mentioning on this channel just because it is so gosh darn funky. I can't think of another domestic car that has something that's this wonky that drivers have to read as they drive down the roadway. Let's now close out with an ad from 1985 for the Subaru XT. You'll see why this ad is sometimes nicknamed the Farm Boy ad. Hope you enjoy. Let's take a look. Remember when you were my age, Dad? Come on. You remember when you were my age, Dad? Come on, Dad. You understand what I mean, right? It's my first car. It's your money, son. But if you want my advice, buy another Subaru. It's being good to us. Sure, Dad. We agreed you'd buy a Subaru. But, Dad, I did. The new Subaru. Thanks for watching this video. Let me know if you enjoyed this feature on the Subaru XT. If you did, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And check out the video thumbnails at bottom left and right for some suggestions for you.